welcome back to Waiting in Laodicea. I'm your host, A.T. Martinez, and today we got a very special topic for you. Ready? Play it. That's it, folks. We're going to be talking about fame and not the TV show. The American God. What, you say? You're talking about a 1980s TV show. That's not an American God. No, but the quest for fame is. And that is what the second part of my American God series. Because so many people do things to make themselves famous. I mean, and then they try to use that fame to make themselves even more special. The quest for fame, to live forever. I mean, we see it first and foremost in the actresses and actors out there. These people have sold their souls, more or less, to be able to get on a television show or a movie show and pretend to be something they're not. And then they turn around and they want to tell you how to live your life. They want to tell you, no, 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 you've got to support this person because we don't like that person. You know, when you look at the morality of Hollywood... I honestly have one question. Why would anybody care what any of these people have to say? The vast majority of the people in Hollywood sleep around, do drugs. If they're married, it may only be for even a couple weeks. And then they divorce and go to another person and go to another person. And that's providing they even even waste the time getting married. This is supposed to be the epitome of morality. And they're supposed to be able to tell me honestly how to live my life? You know, the very idea is mind-boggling. Modern politicians are another group that are all about the fame. And I'm sorry, these people will do just about anything to boost their image. They lie, they cheat, they will steal your money and give it to the wrong people. All because... Well, I'm, a, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm here to help you. You ain't helping nobody but yourself. I mean, the epitome of examples. Nancy Pelosi. Americans are starving. Americans are, are suffering because of COVID-19. And what is she worried about? She's worried about letting President Trump get a, another win. So she blocks the stimulus checks and blocks performing any stimulus until after the election because she just could not let Trump have a win. Anything so that she can look more powerful. She had to have the win. Joe Biden, his situation in the Middle East. I mean, come on. The man hadn't done anything to help solve nothing. Egypt went in, brokered a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, and what does Biden do? He gets on a national tel press conference and tells everybody, see, see, see I want to really thank my people because we did a great job. You didn't, he didn't do nothing. But he sure tries to make it sound like it. He sits back and talks about how his administration has created more jobs than any administration in history. They didn't create nothing. These are the people going back to work from COVID. That's not a creation. That is something he had nothing to do with. Matter of fact, you want to get right down to it, he's fought against that tooth and nail. Him and his uh, Dr. Fauci have been telling us forever that we should all stay born with us, locked down in, in our own home prisons. It's the governors of the Republican states who sat back and said, that's it, this is done, go. See, anything and everything to boost his image, regardless if it's true. Why? Because he needs his fame. He needs to justify his popularity. Another group of people who are very good at trying to strive for fame are some of these modern victims. I mean, he... <laughs> I'm sorry. Even the, the Harry's wife the Duchess of wherever she suffered is going has to go on television and talk about how victimized she has been. 
because she's part of the royal family. And that's just, come on, folks. This is a woman who isn't getting enough attention. So she's going to go cry on national television. And the sad part is it worked. She got more attention. Her husband, Harry, goes out, goes out, opens his mouth, and seems to get all sorts of attention. Maybe not the attention he really wants, but the point is, they'll do anything to get some attention. We see it all the time. Not just from Harry and Meghan Markle. We see it from has-been actors, has-been politicians, who have got to come out and just run their mouths to make themselves important again. They can't live without that adulation of the masses. You know, then we look at, say, look at the rise of the, the mass killers. Well, okay, that's a misnomer. Mass killing hasn't really changed in numbers. It's just this particular grouping of mass killings. That's the one where they go out and just shoot people at random. Now, that seems to be slowly on the rise. Why? Because they get attention. Do you think anybody would have given a darn who some of these people were if they hadn't blown away 10, 20, 30 people? I mean, it's like the contest to be the number one serial killer. Anything to get that 15 minutes of fame. And all of this is because that fame is what seems so alluring, so inviting, that people want everyone to know who they are. What is it they're trying to really do? Well, when you're sitting there and you're worshipping the idea of fame, and you'll do anything and everything for it, you've created a god. And in the United States, fame is probably the second most popular of all the gods. But it's an empty god. Because you can't always be the center of attention. You can't always be in the limelight. You open your mouth today and people will have forgot about you in two days. It's a fleeting God. It gives you a momentary fix and then you need another. And another and another and another. Whereas if you went to the true God, he'd all, he's going to be with you always. You don't have to worry about, you know, going out and making yourself popular to get his attention. He's only giving you his attention. All you got to do is pay attention. All you got to do is open your eyes, get your eyes off of being on television a moment, and look at what's being said. In that quiet, still voice, he's turning to you and say, believe in me, and you won't perish. But you'll have everlasting life. Now, to me, that's a true God. Not the American God. And this has been the second episode of the American God series. Stay tuned for other episodes because there will be others. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, hit that like button. Hit that share button. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, your best friends, your small group, your church. Anybody and everybody out there that you know, send them this. Why? Because it when you do, encourage them to subscribe. Number one, that is the easiest way you can support this ministry. Subscribe and like. Get others to do the same, and we can grow. Now, I recently heard of a channel. It's a small, small channel. They've got only you know, a few, few, a few types of episodes. They've only been on online now for three months and they've already got 10,000 followers I'd love to see that the word of God is reaching more than just that more than they are not because I think what they're wrong what they're doing is wrong or anything else but the idea of God being able to reach so many people I love the idea please help me make that reality and you can do this by sharing this video with your friends and others and encouraging them to take a moment out of their day and spend some time with me. Oh, last but not least, folks, if you 
if you want, you can hit that notification bell so that you can be told whenever our next episodes post. We do try to post every, well, six days out of the week. We do not post on Sundays. But the rest of the week, you should be able to see a new episode. Somewhere in those episodes will be long ones. And, but the majority are going to be your shorter episodes. Why? Because I don't want your whole day. I just want to remind you that he's out there. And trying to refocus your life on him. Thank you very much for spending this night with me. I'm A.T. Martinez, your host on Waiting in Laodicea. And may God be, bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you.